padding back when you're installing it, when you're installing the, uh, the quick release kit onto the straps, onto the existing straps, then there's enough room. You just have to slide the soft padding back on each side of the strap. And it fit perfectly. In fact, it was too tight when I first put it on. I had to loosen it. So it's really a good product. And by looking at it, I thought it released by pushing it in or squeezing it. And I didn't like that. I was concerned about that getting bumped and then releasing the helmet. But what I noticed was, I when I purchased it, I said, let me just buy it and see what it looks like. Because there's free returns, right? If I didn't like it or it didn't work according. Look at that bunny. Hey, bunny. Hi. Hello. So the, uh, make sure no one's coming behind me. As long as the, um, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, the quick release is, for the helmet is um, made of stainless steel and it's extremely strong so some people were saying that they were concerned that it wouldn't be safe and it looks very safe to me and I'm very happy with the quality of it I can see why they're selling a thousand units a month. A thousand units a month. Ooh, you know, I, I've only come through here in the nighttime and the gate has always been closed for the lake. I'm calling it a lake. I don't know if it's a lake, a pond, I don't know what they call it, what it's called. But it may be open today and I have to make sure I don't accidentally fall in the water. <laughs> that can happen. So if I'm feeling uncomfortable, I'll just have to walk my electric unicycle instead of riding it. I don't have a tether on it. What I want is a kill switch tether. I still want that. Oh, this is beautiful. A kill switch tether is... When the electric unicycle gets out of range from me. Right behind you. Thank you. When the electric unicycle gets away from me, let's say beyond four feet, for example, it pulls this tether switch, which flips a switch, or, disc or releases the circuit, or interrupts the circuit, so the unicycle won't rev up. Because right now, the only thing that turns the unicycle off is when it revs, uh, oh, when it either revs up real high, to a certain point of RPMs, or <clears throat> when um, it leans over a certain amount of angle. Right now, mine's at 40 degrees. On your left. Two and a half miles. One more time around the but if the unicycle gets away and doesn't achieve that lean angle, it can actually rev up to full speed. And that's, that's very dangerous. So, I haven't spent a lot of time looking into a kill switch tether. I'm told that, like, I think they're called sea dews. I forgot the other word for those. But, I'll call them watercrafts. Motorized watercrafts. When they get away, they, the power turns off. That way it doesn't, um, Go far away from the person, right? On your left. Okay, where's the exit here? Let's see. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think this is where I go to continue. I think this is the path I would take usually from the street. So we'll try this.
So I'm a big fan, you probably noticed, of micro-mobility. I read articles as a kid about people riding and saying, why are we driving around 3,000 pound automobiles that throw away more than half of the money we spend on gas. Right? They're called heat engines. And that's from the Department of Energy. Did a, did a, a study on the engine, the combustion engine. And the combustion engine, as I understand it, no matter what they do to it, has to throw away 60% of its energy. That's just, it's just a waste. That's a wasteful design. It's a very waste design. But in addition to the fact that we're throwing away half the money that we spend on fuel to, to making heat. And that doesn't matter what engine, it could be a Prius, it could be the hybrids, it, any combustion engine that's running on gasoline. But in addition to that, that we're throwing away all that energy, making heat, which doesn't move the car, right? Doesn't move the automobile, just makes heat. 40% or less goes to moving the automobile, right? So if we spend a dollar, 40 cents goes to... 40 cents goes to moving the automobile. See that kid said, that's cool. Kids love these. And when they grow up, they can get them. And they, they do. <laughs> that often happens. On your left. So... What happens is, uh, I was reading about, when I was a child, very young, reading about this idea of why are we driving around with one person? Because this is often the case, right? We're not talking about a family. We're talking about where one person is driving a vehicle that weighs 3,000 pounds. So then it starts to make sense that if we don't need that much uh, do we call it real estate? Do we call it automobile real estate? If we don't need that much material and that much waste to move, what's the other end of that extreme? And to me, a bicycle, any micro mobility, any micro mobility, that's anything that's not a vehicle that weighs several thousand pounds. This electric unicycle weighs 88 pounds. It's made of magnesium. It's called a Lynx. It will never need a tune-up. It will never need a transmission. It will never need brakes. Because the motor also doubles as a braking system. I think that's the path I can go down. I haven't tried that yet, that one. So the motor becomes a generator when you lean back and it puts a little bit of charge back in the battery. Not a significant amount, but it's not it's also not wasting brake pads, which cost money, right? And lead to brake job when needing a brake job. And you have to have brakes done. You don't have to have that done on electric unicycle. There's no disc rotors, there's no brake pads, there's no transmission. The wheel is the motor, and the wheel is the generator. It, if you think of minimalism, minimalism, right? Or what's the least you need to move? That's one of the qualities that drew me to the electric unicycle. And I'm really glad that I gave myself the chance to learn how to ride it. And I kept thinking back to like football. And if you've played sports or I don't know if other sports have hell week. I imagine they probably do. 
but that word kept coming to mind when I was learning to ride the electric unicycle because well for me in addition to the injuries there was also muscle pain just from using muscles that haven't been used in a long time or possibly have never been used to that degree but after a few weeks then the muscles are less and less sore but the injuries I noticed would still hurt which is interesting right because I don't know why I thought that it was possible that the injuries might hurt less if I was doing activities but that's probably on a case-by-case -case basis as well right that's probably on an individual basis like each person might be different right because they say everybody's different even though we have we share a lot of things in common so when I first went around this path myself I went too far but there's a turn right here and that's important to make that turn oh I could have went down right there okay I'm gonna stop because I don't know if a car's coming yep car's coming glad I stopped I don't know if I could get on this, on a hill right here. Going downhill, let's see if I can do it. Oops! Ah. Uh, let me see how I can do this. I think I'll start over. Go back here, get balanced. Go back here. Oops! Ah. Someone's coming on their bicycle. Oh, they're going straight. I wonder where they're going. Okay. Let's see if I can do that. I don't see any cars coming this way. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, I'm going. I'm balanced now. I'm going to go down. Whew. Okay. Made it. I'm looking in my rear view mirror. I don't see any cars coming. Good. I did order two P-I-D-Z-O-O-M PID Zoom mirrors. And they're on their way here. I'm really excited about that. And those are actually, I don't know if they're called concave or convex. My guess would be they're concave. No, I think, is it con I don't know which one it's called, but it's where it makes a wide angle view. It's like in the rear view mirror on the passenger side of a vehicle or sometimes both mirrors, where it says objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Gonna jump right there. Well, the reason it's closer than they appear, anything you see in the mirror, is because a wide angle lens in that specific situation where it's a mirror and it's wide angle like that where it shows wider, it makes things appear that they're further away than they are, but it shows more periphery. Periphery, peripheral. I think that's what you call it, but like your peripheral vision, it shows more what, like what's next to you on each side, which is what I want to see. Look how nice this looks. Very nice. There's a bunny right there. Hi, hey, bunny. It's a golf course. So I'm reminding myself, even though I'm enjoying the scenery, I also have to continuously study the ground, study the terrain, study the conditions. What's happening? Is there a drop? Is there a dip? Is there rocks? If I run over a rock with this wheel, I could easily go down. Okay, there's someone with a dog right there. 
Not sure how I'm gonna do this. Might let him go or something. There we go. Let's see. Yep. Hi. What kind of dogs are those? Uh, labs. Oh, they're they good looking dogs. Thank you. Have a good day. <coughs> they almost crashed. Almost crashed. Did you hear that burnout I did on that route? The tire spun. That's the first time I've done that. Now people that are have more experience will do that for fun. They'll go on a route and they'll do a little burnout. <laughs> And someday I may get to that point, but I'm not there yet. Well, I just did it, but I almost fell. <laughs> but see, I stayed on the electric unicycle. I kept one foot on it. I didn't just let it fall. But, you know, I'm saying this, but I'm not... Please, you know, talk with professional riders and get advice from them. I don't want to tell you guys the wrong advice. I'm just sharing with you what I'm doing. It's dark in here. Going to the tunnel. Going through here at nighttime is really interesting. <clears throat> so a gentleman on a, a mountain biker showed me this path. Charged me a dollar for the first 1.5 miles, and then he said, "I'm off the clock, but I can keep. We can keep going." On your left. There's a mountain biker. Just like. 